You ready? Uh-huh. Well, hello there. Hey, guys. And welcome to another episode of... Massey Art Studios. I'm Lee. <laughs> I'm Jeremy. And we're coming to you r- right away from the studio. Yes. AKA the garage. Reason being, um, someone is in the house and we didn't want to disrupt them. Yes. <laughs> so we, we decided to move our locations. Um, all right, Show Pony. Very different episode from, from normal. Yes. You know, normally you'll watch us throwing acrylic paints onto something, but what's today's episode? Today's episode is on resin. And why is that? What are you doing? I am resining a painting that I did, a bloom, for someone special. Okay, I love it. So there is an episode up already on our channel of of me flood coating a canvas. Today you're going to flood coat a canvas instead? I am. Love it. Okay, resining was one of those things that people are very scared about. Yes. And I understand why. Because you've created this wonderful piece of art. And then the last thing you want to do is wreck it by throwing something on it and then it, it going wrong. Yeah. Now, what Jeremy is gonna do this, he's gonna do it right first time, but go and check out the other episode we've got on about resinin and flood coating canvases because I'll show you how to fix problems if you have them. Yes. How to sand down the top coat of the resin and apply another coat if it's needed. Exactly. Yeah, so you're not gonna to need to do that because it's nope. gonna be perfect first time, <laughs> but it's not always. Don't be afraid of resin. Don't it's be afraid fixable, of resin. It's fixable, it's workable, it's malleable, and it's really beautiful when you actually get a piece that's Absolutely. resin properly. So I'm excited to see what you're going to do. I'm excited. If you haven't already, go please check out www.fluidartexperience.com. We'll be there showing you how to blob, which is something that's going to be coming up back on the channel yeah. again very soon. And then you've got a l- 10 other artists there with us, all sorts of techniques. Lots and lots of fun, and we're going to be in Seattle April the 27th to the 29th. I can't wait for that, you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm like wishing the year away already. <laughs> I already want it to be April. It's crazy. Um, but without much further ado, I think you need to get resin in. I, I, I want to. I can't wait to do this. And we are using today Mixed Media Girls product. Um, so we're really excited to use a brand new product for us to flood coat. We've used this for other projects, yes. but never to flood coat. So we're going to see how this works. All right, show pony. Let's do it. Let's get to it. Hey guys, it's Jeremy here, and I am super excited about today. What I am excited about. Today. I know. <laughs> I know. It's an exciting day in the studio. It is. Why it is. are you excited? Because first of all, I have this beautiful bloom in front of me. Who did that? I did that. Of course you did. Because yes, it's, it's half decent. Because mine and is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You make good bloom. Whoops. And um, and so I have this bloom that I need to resin because we're giving it as a gift to someone. Okay. Um, and it's going to someone special. I'm not going to say who it is. They'll okay. find out whenever it gets there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and resin absolutely does help any of the pigments oh like come back to life. Absolutely, it helps with this sparkle, this glimmer. Mm-hmm. As you can see here, it kind of just like shines. Got it. Um, now, how long ago did you paint that painting? Um, it, it was over four weeks ago. Good. Okay. So, and yeah. the reason being? Is because you have to let the paint cure. It has to be completely 100% dry before you resin. It has to be cleaned off. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of alcohol. Isopropyl. Gonna, isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to, yeah, not vodka. <laughs> um, and I'm going to spray this a little bit. Right. And then I'm just going to wipe this off. And the sides too. Don't and the forget. sides too. I like to spray the paper towel and then wipe it because yeah. I find if you spray it onto the canvas, it just disintegrates. You know, it disappears. Yeah. Um, but you're doing this because? Because this is going to get all the dust particles off right. of here. If there's any hair, dust particles. Um, it's really awesome because it'll just take that right off. Can I quickly just go back to the comment you made about curing? Yes. So there is no rule that says it has to be four weeks. It's definitely going to be impacted by your environment, by how hot or cold your studio is. Exactly. But if you were to resin a piece that was still damp, there is a likelihood it's not going to say it's definitely going to happen, but a likelihood that it could mold underneath the resin. Absolutely. Because the moisture can't dissipate and then it's going to just go manky. So exactly. if you think that, it, that it's dry enough and cured enough, go ahead and resin. But we like to wait three to four weeks. Yeah, we do. Um, so now that, that I put that alcohol on here and cleared that, uh, clean it off. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, guys, I double glove. Okay. Whenever I do resin, I double glove. 
Um, I also wear a little bit of a mask. Yes. And um, just to protect myself mm -hmm. from, you know, from the resin itself, the chemicals. And, uh, and yeah. It is, it is a chemical reaction. We are, we are chemists today. It's a chemical reaction. It is indeed. And uh, I think you've got it backed and pinned as well, right? I do. I have this backed and pinned. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason for this is to, to back and pin this is to keep the resin, one, from sticking to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want the resin to stick to the bottom of this. Right. Um, and also, to, to let the resin run, you have it pinned so that way it's elevated up off the ground and it has a place to the final drippings to drip off. The dripping. The dripping. And I noticed you put parchment paper down on our plastic sheet. I did. I put parchment paper down because this is going to be easy cleanup. It is. It is yeah. totally. Okay, I love it. So there's so, all that prep done. So just yes. to recap, we've painted and cured the canvas. You've backed and pinned it. Yes. You've just cleaned it off with isopropyl alcohol. What's next? What's next is calculating how much resin is going to go on the canvas. It's only a little, a little, it's a little sweet canvas that you've got it there. It is a little sweet canvas. Uh, that's so cute. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to go to artresin.com. Yes. And now, they, we're not using art resin, but no. the calculator is actually very helpful. The calculator is <laughs> yeah. helpful. The art resin calculator is very helpful. Okay. And, um, and what it does, it calculates how much resin that you're going to mix to put on your canvas. How big is that canvas? This is a 10 by 10 inch canvas. And what did said art resin calculator say? Um, it said right around like three. It said three ounces. It said three ounces. Yeah. So it didn't say right around three. It, it did. Said it said three. Three ounces. Absolutely. It was three exact ounces. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a, a, com a collaborate, no, a concoction of. It's two things that make up the three ounces. Absolutely. A it's two things. Um, the resin that we are using today actually is not our resin, it's not. but it is. Mixed Media Girls Resin. MMG. MMG. Okay, love it. Yeah, um, Mixed Media Girls Resin, we've had this for a little while. We have not used it yet. You've used it in some other projects. But I have. Not used it to back a camp or to, to flood a canvas. Exactly. Excited about it. I am excited about it and it's amazing. So, um, so, so follow all the instructions on the bottles, people. Safety yes. precaution, safety first, yes. safety first. Jeremy's talked about gloves. He's talked about the table. He's talked about the mask. Yes. All the things that you want to do to make sure that you're protecting yourself and the people around you yes. in order to make sure that there's nothing harmful that's going to kill you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually spray some alcohol into this cup and wipe it out oh. so that way there's no particles from the inside of the cup. Wow, interesting. I've never done that, but it makes total sense. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we are good to go. Squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. Because um, the last thing you want is like a big like hair right. or, or dust. dust bunny, right. you know, tracking its way across your uh, across your canvas. Now I have put up a art resin, no an art resin, a how to flood your canvas resin video. Yes. And it's been up now for about almost two years, year and a half. Yeah. It's got almost 100,000 views. I know. And it's been very helpful. It has. But I did one thing that went against the instructions on the bottle. What was that? I measured by volume rather than, sorry, by weight rather than by volume. Yes. It's how I've always done it, people. Even though Art Resin says measure by volume, volume. not by weight, I, I've resined probably 100 pieces, 100 canvases, and it has never, ever failed me because the difference is so very small. Yeah. But you're going to do it the 100% the right way. I am. Which is what? Um, well, I have this really cool cup. It has measurements like all over it. Right. Um, as you can see here, um, but it does have an ounces right here. Perfect. And because it said to go three ounces, I'm actually going to do four. <gasps> Controversial. Controversial scandal. Right. Um, because I want to make sure that I actually really have enough resin to be spread over this entire canvas. Well, and also, if I'm being honest, it's a little hard to get halfway through the one and the two mark to do one and a half <laughs> of each <laughs> of the sure products. Is. So it, made yeah. it did make total sense. Yeah, yeah but I want to make sure that there's enough on okay. here. Okay, love it. Um, so I'm going to move this out of my way. Okay. And uh, I'm going to put my cup right here. Right. And uh, I'm going to go with, first of all, I'm going to do resin A. Right. The, the first part. And I'm going to go ahead and put this 
in uh, in my cup up to two ounces. Got it. And then the next step is um, B. This B. Okay. The hardener. Got it. And then I'm going to mix this in up to four ounces. Okay. Well, it's going to be two ounces of this and two ounces of, of the. So it's four uh, ounces. So it's four total. ounces in total. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to get put this up to the four ounce mark. So I'm going to go ahead and pour part A into the cup up to two ounces. Love it. So I'm going to have to get down here and put my glasses on so I can see. <laughs> get those gigs on so you can see what you're doing. And whilst you're doing this, I'm going to make a little comment. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy is putting two ounces of A in this cup and then he's going to add another two ounces of B into the same cup making four ounces. Now, the more inexperienced resiners, resonators of you out there might not feel comfortable adding the two products together. You might want to have one cup with two ounces, another ounce, a cup with two ounces, and mix those two together in a third cup. Why? Well, because if you overshoot, you can take it back out of the cup. Whereas if Jeremy overshoots now, he's a little screwed. Yes. So um, Jeremy and I have been resining for two and a half years. We both resined a ton of pieces. So he he and I both feel comfortable adding these two products together because exactly. we know the consistency, it exactly. kind of makes sense to us. Yes. But you might want to mix these two in individual cups and then combine them into a third so that you know that you've got the right amount. It's super important that you get the right amount because even just a little bit off on one of the two products could affect the way that this cures. The, the way that it cures. Do you like some paper I towel? I would like a paper towel, please. There you go, sir. Thank you. Got so a little bit of resin. Yeah, art resin and, and mixed media girls don't have a smell. No. And you're wearing a mask anyway, so that, exactly. also, that also helps and protects clearly. Yeah. Okay, let's see here, I can take those off now um, and now what happens is is that you have to stir this okay for five minutes now marcy's bottles say two to four but, oh two to four but we like to mix for five full minutes i do like to mix for five full minutes because i like to make sure that it's really mixed and everything is like perfect on it i'm starting you a timer timer um and now whenever you're mixing this guys you want to just kind of scrape the bottom and the sides as you're mixing it to make sure all of it gets mixed and um, that all of it gets mixed right and uh, nothing gets left on the sides of the cup or on the bottom of the cup. Yeah, if you have any residue of either one of those two products on the side and then you scrape it out onto your canvas and they're not combined properly, then again, you'll have an impact in your cure. There's a few questions or a few comments that I get on that video all the time. Yes. It didn't cure properly or I've got rivulets of kind of, you know, one or two of the of the con the, the um, chemicals. Yeah, it makes like little rivers. It's because you haven't mixed it together for long enough. When, it, when these things say two to four minutes, they mean two to four minutes. Yeah. And you've got to mix these together properly because it's that chemical reaction of these two products combining that will make the resin harden and it's a lot of time. It is a lot of time. In a lot of, in a lot of time. In a lot of time. Yeah. No, not, not in a lot of, <laughs> in the a lot of time. <laughs> Five minutes is not long to mix. It's not. So why don't we go ahead and fast forward through this? Well, I have another question. How, okay. are, they, how are they mixing? And they're mixing great. Yeah, they're mixing well. Yeah, they're mixing really good. I noticed that you're you're mixing it, but you're not whisking it. You're not no. you're not like really going for it. Why I'm is not that? beating it like an egg. Yeah, why? Yeah, because you want to try to get as little or as few bubbles in here as you can. Okay. And that's kind of almost impossible. It's going to get bubbles. It is. But but the way you're going to apply it will be able to show people how to get rid of them. Exactly. Correct? Okay. So be conscious of the fact that you don't want to whip this within an inch of its life, but, but you don't have to be totally gentle with it. In fact, being gentle with it will have a more negative effect. And that exactly. is that it won't mix properly. Exactly. So over mix it and pop the air bubbles rather than under mixing it. And then you're screwing up your canvas. Yeah, exactly. All right, show pony, you got another three minutes left. Should we fast forward? Let's fast forward this. <laughs> All right, guys, five minutes is finally up. And how's your arm? <laughs> My hand is a little like, uh... <laughs> Big baby, whatever. A little 50 pound weight, you can't stir for five minutes, whatever. So now yeah. that I got it all stirred in here. Combined. Combined. 
Something that you don't want to do whenever you're pouring out your resin from your cup. Okay. Is whenever you pour your resin out of your cup, um, don't scrape the sides and the bottom to get every last bit of dro uh, you know, drop of that resin out of your cup. Why? Because if you didn't properly uh, mix it, there's still some of that resin that didn't get mixed on the side of your cup okay. or on the bottom. Got it. And that will leave those rivers in <gasps> your, tip. yeah, I love in that. Your, in your, on your piece. So normally like, you know, whenever you're at home and you're trying to get every last minute of acrylic paint out of a tub, you'll be scraping and yeah. crawling at it, clawing at it. Here, yeah, here. You, that again, that might you have any reason why it's going to impact composition. Um, now, something that, uh, that I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and just do this. Okay. Um, something that I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it all around the edges you it. and then I'm going to pour the rest in the center. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. So that's four ounces of resin that's been mixed up. I said you only needed three on the art resin calculator, but for us, we'd rather have more than not enough. Yeah. Um, can I make a quick comment? Yeah. One thing that we forgot to tell everyone at home that we did yeah. was you sprayed the back of that canvas with water I did. before we started this process. And the reason being that what you want to do, because resin is a self-leveling product, you want to make this canvas as flat and as tight as possible. So it has been leveled and, and Jeremy made sure that this canvas was super tight. Now, whilst I, we said not to scrape this cup, pouring every last bit out of it is totally acceptable. Yeah. You just don't want to be scraping the edges now with your popsicle stick, because if there is any particles of either one of those two products that haven't been mixed properly, they will be either on the sides of the cup or in the bottom. Yes. Okay. All right. Good to go. Good to go. So we've got a tight canvas on a level canvas, and now you pour your four ounces of resin on there. Yes. What's the next, big boy? I'm rolling up my sleeves and getting ready. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use my hands. You, and this is why you double glove. This is why you double glove. And I'm gonna just spread this resin out over the canvas. Okay, I love it. Yeah. And the reason why you put it on the edges first was, was what? It's because, um, well, why don't you tell them? Okay. Well, I, th this is the way that I do it, so that we do this the same way because okay. we are, this, you know, we, we resin exactly the same. Um, the reason why I do it is because what you want to make sure that you're doing with this resin is a coating every single inch, inch of, it, of it, but also that you're going to have enough resin to go down the sides. Yes. We like to resin the sides of our canvases. We don't take the sides off. We only no. take the bottom off. So having that little bit of resin on the edges, just make sure that you've got enough to be able to take it over the edges and yeah. the sides. And it's purely that means in. And what Jeremy's now doing is he's running his finger the length of each of the sides, up and down. And what you can do with your fingers is you, you will be able to feel, feel where there isn't resin applied. So then he's just taking the resin from the top of the canvas and just making it sure but it's all coated on the yeah. sides. Again, you can resin using implements. I've seen people resin using like sponge brushes even. Yeah. But I think that if you've got two gloves on your hands, the best applicator for resin is actually your fingers because you are absolutely going to be able to feel where there's resin and feel where there's not resin. And that's the most important. That's the most that's the easiest way of doing it. Yeah. For me. And you know how much I love getting my hands all dirty. Which is the reason why I do 90% of all the resin in this house. You want to make sure that you're still leaving a little bit of resin on the top there, show pony. I see that you're scraping a lot of it off. It really is just your gloved fingers that you need to be using. I know. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm getting it. Okay. Listen, you can feel it, so you do what's right. I felt like three ounces was, was a very, very small amount, but we looked at the calculator three times and it did say three ounces. I wonder if the resin calculator has been updated. Because sometimes I feel like it was too much. But now I look at it, it looks just right. Yeah. Now all your edges and all your sides, they're all covered. Yes, they are. And the, reason, the way that you can know whether they're covered or not is your gloved finger will just glide over where there's now yeah. resin. If your gloved finger 
kind of stops and feels like there's roughness, that means that there actually isn't resin applied. You're just touching the, the raw canvas. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, good. Okay. So, um, next. Next, we're going to take a torch. Yes. And we're going to torch the top of this to get all the bubbles out. Now, if you look at this sideways, yeah. like at a glance, and you get a glare from it, yeah. you can see all the bubbles in it. Got it. Um, and you'll be able to see what I'm, you'll be able to know what I'm talking about whenever you do this. Yeah. Um, but you'll be able to see like, the little bubbles in it. I'm going to see if I can pop. get a side view of it for you. And and again, we've talked about this two times now. Here is why you're double gloving because Jeremy can now re remove that top layer of glove. Yep. Which he I'm has a second see. glove on underneath, so it means he can still touch the canvas and not get resin all over his fingers. Yep. But now he can pick up the torch without getting resin all over his torch. Now you might think that's a waste of gloves. It's just the way that we prefer to do it. You can wrap parchment paper around the handle of your torch or you know there are other ways in which you could actually do this but for us that's just the easiest way yeah now jeremy i'm going to see if i can capture you popping the air bubbles okay now if you can see the dents in the resin there don't dismay because it is self-leveling so as jeremy yeah. gets to this process oh yeah i can totally see the bubbles popping popping bubbles now you're not looking to heat the resin no Jeremy, right? You're just looking to yeah. pop the bubbles, correct? Just looking to pop the bubbles. So I kind of go over it one time. Yeah. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit. Okay. Let the other bubbles that I, I weren't, I was not able to get to, um, that I was not able to get to, to rise to the top. Right. And then I'm going to retorch it. Yeah, I like to try and pop these bubbles two or three times. Yes. Just so that we can make sure that everything has been popped. Popped. Are you going to get your edges now with a popsicle stick? Yes. And... What I'm doing now is um, you want to just try to get as much of the resin that's being dripped mm -hmm. off of the bottom of your canvas. Because, oh wow. Oh wow, strength of 10 minutes. <laughs> Jeremy just <laughs> broke his popsicle stick. Because this is just like acrylic paint. These drips are pulling all of that resin off the top yeah. of your canvas. And you don't want to lose any of this resin, even though we've got an extra one ounce, which is nothing, by the way. One ounce yeah. is absolutely nothing. Yeah. But you've got that extra one ounce there on this canvas. You want as much of that resin to stay on there as possible. Absolutely. This scraping of the edges is something that we'll also do two and three times as well. Yes, absolutely. So, all right, let me see here. I'm gonna get a good look at it and see. Another thing I do like to do, Show Pony, if I can tell you one of my tips, yeah. is I'll take my iPhone, you could do this with anything if you want, and I'll use the light. the light to see if I'm missing any of the bubbles. This will also help you see whether there's any schmutz in there, but can you see that shine from the oh TLPs now? Oh my god, the now? TLPs are like glowing. Like this has now come back to life. This is what we say about it bringing the, them back to life again. Uh, so pretty. But that just helps, I file. If you've got studio lights or an iPhone or whatever, do it. Yeah. Okay? Okay. You ready for a second torch in? Second torch. And there's still bubbles popping. Yeah, it takes, you know, you, you've just spent five minutes mixing this thing together. There are bubbles that will take a little time to appear. Yeah. And then I'll also scrape the edges and we'll probably do that one more time. Yeah, I'll definitely torch it one more time. Okay. How are you going to protect it in the meantime? Okay, so... Because what you don't want is anything landing in this, clearly. Exactly. So you don't want anything landing in it. You don't want dust getting into it, hairs, bugs, flies, whatever. Right. Um, so what we do is we have these nets, which I'm not going to completely put over the canvas here. Let's see here. We have these nets here that open up and they... We put them over the piece. It's a picnic saver. It is a picnic saver. Yeah, so basically this is, I'm gonna just shake it off. Okay. In case, because this, this has been sitting on top of the, the garage for a little yeah. while. Um, this These basically are made to uh, protect your sandwiches. If you were to go out on a little picnic. And um, this one is done. Okay. There you go, show pony. See, and what happens is it's a little picnic thing and it'll go right over that. Yeah, do it. Just right over it. Okay. Well, 
I don't, I don't want to get... You're not, no, you're not in any resin. Okay. You're, res you're resin was right around your, your okay. piece. And see, it just perfectly covers this up, keeps, for, keeps it really nice and clean, keeps right. it from getting anything on it. Now this is a 10 by 10 canvas, so it will fit nicely under that, yeah. maybe what, 14 by 14 oh, easily. Picnic, easily. picnic saver. Yeah. We have ones that are bigger, that will fit up like maybe 20 by 20 inch canvases. Yeah. And then we've also got a mosquito tent. We do. For when we're doing multiple pieces or really big pieces. Yeah. So all you want to do is just be, have something that's going to keep the crap off your canvas. Yes. <laughs> that's the technical term for it. That is the technical term for it. Somebody what are you doing, show pony? Do so it always makes me nervous doing that. Why did you do it? Why did I do what? Take that off again. Because I'm going to get underneath, oh, I'm going to scrape the bottom of it. the third time? Yes. Okay, and you're going to torch it for the third time too? I am going to torch it. Perfect. I'll do this for the first maybe 10 or 15 minutes if I'm doing a big canvas. Yeah. It's such a little canvas, you definitely won't need to do it because there's so little resin on there. But um, you don't want all of the resin running off the canvas. And you also just want to make sure that, that with the torching that there's no bubbles in there too. Yes. So let's do this again. Okay. Now the flame isn't touching. You just you're kind of just floating it across the top of the canvas just to pop those bubbles. So yeah. you're not really heating the resin too much. I can be a little overzealous with it sometimes. I can really get in there. But um, I think that looks perfect. And then why don't you put it to bed and we'll leave it now for 24 hours and see what happens. All right, let's do it. Put it to bed, big boy. All right, here we go, guys. Covering this bad boy up. We'll see you in 24 hours. Well, actually, we won't. But we'll show you the dried result on Sunday. Yes, we'll show you the dried <laughs> result on Sunday. All right, there, sticky fingers. <laughs> so there you have it. There you have, there you have it. it, sticky feet. I know you hate getting stuff on your fingers. And oh no my gosh. Resin, the reason why I do do most of the resin work is because this fool really can't stand to have it on his I fingers. Um, one thing we forgot to talk about 15 times is where to get hold of this product. You know by now, because you've seen us do this a thousand times, but if, if this is your first, mm -hmm. where to get this is www.mixedmediagirl.com. That's www.mixedmediagirl.com. Information will be down here too. And um, not only does she have resin, she has her own pouring medium, she has her own range of paints, yes. she has her own range of 3D paint printed products to get paint onto canvases. She has courses online, you can take yeah. one on one courses with her. And she's going to be at the Fluid Art Experience as well teaching. Yep. Both online, so both one on one classes and classroom based classes too. Yes. So if you want to go and spend some time with Marcy, you know how to do it. Um, what did you think? I think it, it's going to come out amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see one single bubble in there once I torched it three times. Right. Um, I cannot wait to see it dry. There's two or three things I want to hear about. First off, you clearly wore a mask as you were going through the process, yes. but tell me, now we've taken the masks off, what do you think about the smell? And there's absolutely hardly any smell. Absolutely hardly any smell, people. Yeah. You heard it here. Absolutely hardly any smell. Um, so yes, not a lot of smell. We know that there are other resins out there that stink, stink. when you mix them oh, together. Terrible. Absolutely horrible. One of the reasons why we like other brands is because of that low smell point. Yeah. So not a lot of smell. What about mixing? How well did they mix? It mixed really, really well, actually. Um, yeah, it was great. Okay, that another another interesting point. You know, some of the other resins out there, you have to warm them. Oh, you yeah. have to do different kind of ratio, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Nice and easy, straight from the bottle, mixing it. Yep. Application, how did it smooth on? How did it go oh, on? Oh my gosh, it was, you know what? It was really, it was a nice viscosity. It had like this really smooth kind of melted buttery feel to it. So whenever I was uh, wiping my hands or, or moving my hands across the canvas, right. it just really went over very well. I like that, like melted butter, spreading it on toast. <laughs> okay, good viscosity. And the one thing that we can't tell you about just yet is how quickly it, and sorry, how beautifully it has cured, because we're gonna wait until tomorrow to do that, and this video is gonna be up before we've had that chance to see it. Yes. But we will show you on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday that finished piece <laughs> mixedmediagirl.com for all your resin needs thank you marcy for inventing another wonderful product, product. we know it's going to be fantastic already yes um so out of 10 what would you give it i'd give it a 10 oh my god 
There you I have really it. would. 10 out of 10. Because as far as like smell and consistency and you know, the mixing of it and everything, it was pretty darn perfect. See, I would never give anything 10 out of 10. It would be a nine out and a half out of 10 for me, but I like, I'll take it. 10 out of 10 it is. There you have it, folks. You heard it here. For a 10 out of 10 resin, you know where to go. Mixmediagirl.com. Please go check it out. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see how that beautiful piece cures. The minute you put that resin on, it came like- Oh, to life. Yeah, back to life I mean, again. the piggies in it um, were Stunning. just glowing after that. Bling, bling, bling. Yeah. Um, I know that you're mixing up some more resin now for another project, which we're excited about. I am. If you're one of our Patreons, you're going to get to see exactly what that is all about. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's let these peeps go. I know that there was a train before us. Jan, Britta and Kathleen had an episode out for a little collaboration that they oh, did nice. at 6 o'clock Eastern today. So if you didn't see that, please, please go check it out. That's Jan Christensen, Brick Clayton Designs and Kathleen from Cos Creations. Please go check them out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, let's let these peeps get on with their day. Absolutely. Have right. a good night, everybody. I, I've had too much coffee today. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys go. We'll see you back here on Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. So now it's time to spank the Patreons. It is time to spank the Patreons. And who are the Patreons? Well, they're a really special bunch of people. Yes. Who've decided to come and follow us outside of the YouTube channel. It says a completely separate account and people can opt into different tiers. Yeah, absolutely. And those different tiers allow people different rewards. Uh -huh. So for example, at one level, there's behind the scenes pictures and videos and sneak peeks of what we do in the studio. Uh -huh. And then at another level, there is a once a month live stream exclusively just for those yeah. gold level Patreons. And then at another level, they also get a once a month live tutorial. Yes. Where we might take an individual technique and walk through it step by step by step by step. So we really appreciate these guys because they're coming to us and supporting us outside of the channel. It means an awful lot to it us. It does mean a lot to us. So we have some thank yous. And at that gold level, we have, we have Trisha West, we have Terry Leshner, we have Tammy Housebrook, we have Stephanie Hancock, We've got Sharon Luffy, the wonderful pocket rocket Patsy Petrelli. <laughs> We've got Nate Bright Art. We've got Mamadoulas. We have Linda Serieni. We've got Kelly Stowell of Feral Arts. Yeah. We've got Jane Klein and Gloria Salaki. We have Gillian Kennedy of yes. Bell's Creations. We have Elizabeth Giuliano. We have Kathy J. And we have Amy, AKA Crafty Chicken Mom. Yes. And? And then on our platinum level, we have Susan Shepherson, Susan Chigori, Judith Joan Art, we have Janice Pittman, and we have Elaine Burton. Oh my gosh, we all know and love and has been with us pretty much from day one. Yes as most of you have. So thank you so very much for being with us. Yes. We really genuinely do appreciate you and your support. It allows us the opportunity to keep painting and keep doing fun stuff for you guys. Mm -hmm. So thank you so very much. Thank you very much. And to everyone else that's down here below, we honestly can't thank you enough. Really does mean the world to us. So thanks guys. 